Hey, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. All right, okay. So I'm kind of coming in to this one, not really sure what I want to talk about. Um, for context, today is Easter Sunday, so you guys know exactly when this one's being filmed. We are still in nationwide lockdown slash quarantine, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so I am still currently not working my normal job. I'm still doing a lot of editing work. I'm still, my, my aim is still to get the Domega Sons books ready for the end of April. Um, whether or not they release at the end of April will depend on um, how soon I can get the covers ready for them, which is dependent on my cover guy. Uh, so, you know, they, they it may be like beginning of May, uh, mid-May, depending on, on a whole bunch of other stuff, but I want to at least have done all the editing work and be happy with things before those uh, get air. Get, uh, before the end of April, that's what I was going for. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of uh, working on math at the moment. Um, so I'm working every single day, pretty much. So I'm not really giving myself very much time off. Having said that, after the last complete edit, I took a day off to, uh, I took a day off from editing the Dominic Sons book. I still did my normal morning writing. I still did my editing of you know, Rayton, of, you know, Rayton of uh, No Doors Allowed. So I only do a chapter of that a day at the moment, just so that's continuing to tick along. Um, but each chapter takes me about an hour to get through because they are <laughs> they are long chapters. Um, but I took a day off from doing anything to do with the um, the Dominic Sun books because I wanted to sort of come back to the next edit with a fresher head, so I could see more things to it. I also got uh, the beta copies out to my beta readers, and I'm going to apologise to my beta readers now. I have removed certain lines, I have altered certain lines. The story is still the same. The basic story is still the same. I've not done any anything that will change the plot, um, and I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to be doing anything to change the plot. The plot is sound, it's in place, I'm not going to alter anything to do with that um, but certain moments and certain interactions have altered slightly certain lines have been removed certain lines have been added um, it's nothing that's going to completely change the reading experience it's just details um, to make things a bit smoother or details thinking ahead to the the other two books um, that are technically part of this storyline um, I'm thinking with those ones that they are going to experience some major rewrites. Um, I can't remember exactly what their plots are at this point in time, but I'm, I'm fairly certain that I'm sort of going to take the skeleton structure of them and do some major rewrites, definitely with the fourth book. Um, I kind of know sort of where that one goes, and I think I want to I pull it into a different direction because I'm like, I'm not happy with that one at all. That's the one that I'm like, oh, man, that one, that one needs the most work. Um, but as I said, in terms of thinking ahead and thinking about, you know, the the other two parts of the series and making sure that the continuity is good and certain things are sort of hinted at. Yes, I know they're broken down into two separate little arcs, but they're still part of the same grander narrative. Um, even though under the the umbrella of um, Shadows Beneath and Light, there is also going to be a completely disconnected series, and I may well bring in other disconnected books and series into the Shadows Beneath and Light at some point. <laughs> um, I still want the, the four books that are technically all part of the same grander narrative to still have a good flow between them and to improve the, the, uh, the flow that they have between them, even though they are telling now two separate stories just set with the same uh, the same set, set characters and, and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry beige readers, I've had quite a few uh, more line edits than I thought I was going to have, um, various things I've decided to, to add in, little details I've decided to add in. As I said, the basic story is still the same and um, the little changes um, are more things that, you know, affect slight character details than they do anything else, or they just make it flow a little bit better. Um, 
improve the continuity a little bit more, things like that. So it's nothing that's going to affect the actual story itself. It's just tightening up, which is is what I said to you guys that I was going to be doing. Um, it's just a lot more. I certainly I like broken before use is definitely the one which is have having the most changes. <laughs> Like, um, I don't know what it is about Welcome to Marysville, but I think because it's such a, I think this comes down to what I was speaking about last week, um, where I was sort of like saying that uh, Broken Before Use has better horror moments, but sort of becomes more of a dark fantasy versus Welcome to Mary's Vale, which is the better horror narrative, but doesn't necessarily have the same uh, intensity of imagery. Because of that, Welcome to Mary's Vale is a more cohesive narrative. So a lot of like the character details and stuff remain, you know, that you don't need that much change. But yes, there have definitely been line changes. Things are just smoothing things up a little bit, taking things out so it makes a little bit more sense, adding things in so it makes a little bit more sense, um, adding details just to sort of shore up certain ideas. It's like I kind of realised, and um, this, this, this is something that sort of started bothering me um, during the uh, during this, this run-through, is I realised that Broken Before Use is set early summer, which is June July time, um, I, I think it's June, I, th I think it's like the beginning of June, or roughly there and about the beginning of June, which is fine, but that does mean that Oban is then coming in to uh, work with Mary's Vale at the very end of the school year, <laughs> and it was something I was kind of like, what do I do? Do I take it back and set it in in spring to, to sort of give more of a, a believability there? Or do I add in lines of dialogue which smooth over it in Welcome to Marysville? And I've done the latter. I've kind of gone, you know what, there are certain details in Broken Before Use that work better if it is summer um, because that's where it's been set. So let's look at what's being said in um, Welcome to Mary's Vale, because they, ha they are saying that he is starting late anyway, that, you know, he's, he's coming into the school, you know, he's, he's starting later than he should have. Um, so why not clarify, he's also starting near the end of the school year. <laughs> and just sort of smooth that off and make that a little bit smoother. Um, and that's like one of the major sort of, details that have now gone into to Welcome to Mary's Vale. A lot of it with Welcome to Mary's Vale, it is just taking a line off here, adding a line there. Um, there was another little detail where I was kind of like, hang on a minute, this character is actually like he's not completely aware of this thing, um, which is mentioned by another character as being quite important and why has, doesn't he know it? Uh, because in, in theory, based on the information you've currently got, he should know it. So I was like, okay, so I can either mess about with his reaction um, and make it seem more like he's lying. And I kind of didn't want to do that. I He's a, he's a pompous sort of character. And I'm kind of like, nah. <laughs> if he knew, you would know he knew. Um, so I kind of look at a slightly different scene and added a few lines in there to kind of go, okay, this this is why he doesn't know. Um, and it actually helped enhance the characterization of one of the other characters and it actually then actually made the scene work better for it. So yeah, it, it's little things like that. Um, this morning, even though I'm currently actually doing the editing, you know, I've, I've really done like another edit run of uh, Broken Before Use completely since giving out the betas. I'm now working through Welcome to Mary's Vale again. Um, I'm, I'm about 60 or 64 ish pages. Six, yeah, 64 ish pages um, away from completing that, that run of Welcome to Mary's Vale. And this morning I was kind of like, I need to add some dialogue to this scene. And again, that was all to do with uh, setting up for the third and fourth book for the, sit, for the, uh, for the complete story that is. And, series, I guess it's still a, a series in broken into two arcs, um, 
the, the two books that are going to be in their own separate arc. There is actually, as again, because this was designed to be, uh, or because I had started putting in details to make this a four book series, um, back along, there are definitely details within Broken Wolf for Use that does set up the third book in the series, which is going to be the first book in its own arc. Um, when I decide what the name of that arc is going to be, and um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it makes for a lot of interesting things, and I'm also kind of thinking, well, what if I tidy up those two books and then maybe set, and instead of taking this completely separate arc and throwing it in, maybe I create a new arc to, to go in there somewhere, and Shadows Beneath the Light is all to just do with this group of characters, and I'm like, I, I could I, I could do a lot of things. I could do a lot of things. There there are a lot of things that I could do at this point. It could just be a case of we're constantly coming back in and checking in on these uh, characters and then there are different arcs that kind of go alongside that. Um, but yeah, no, um, there are definitely details in the the first book in Broken Before Use which hint at things that don't get explored until later on um, until the third and fourth book and what was the original series. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's an interesting process, um, just in general at the moment. Um, so adding like a few more details in like that, and um, and but at the same time, it still it still doesn't attract from the fact that this works the story because a lot of the information that comes out as it's sort of coming out, there there is kind of a reason for it. Um, it is necessary for developing the character relationships which are happening within the, the narrative and within the story so it's not coming out without a purpose and, and a lot of it is also very thematic um some of the things i've kind of realized with the Dollmaker sons books is they are very much about the loss of innocence a lot of the backstory information that you are given for characters involves in some way, shape or form, a loss of innocence either directly for that character or implied for somebody that character is related to or implied that it kind of affects them but not necessarily in a direct way but there's this, this big theme running through it about the loss of innocence and all of the sort of the backstories that get a lot of attention, a lot of focus on them are all about the loss of innocence um you know if you sort of read between the lines um and that goes for both books uh there is a lot of uh a lot of that kind of thematically tying through and i don't know if that was deliberate or not by me 10 years ago but it's something that i've definitely kind of gone okay yes let's let's absolutely make sure that is as thematically strong as possible i like the idea that you know there, there is this kind of theme tying everything together and there is this sort of narrative below the narrative that kind of ties everything together and, and you know, it's not just about the, the loss of innocence, there is another side to it as well, but, you know, that's, that's you know, for you guys to discover once the books come up. And yes, I know, this is another week talking about... <laughs> I warned you guys, I warned you. <laughs> This wasn't intentional, by the way, I didn't sort of like sit down and go, okay, uh, let's just, you know, let's just talk about the Galway Kassani books again. Um, it's more a case that I sort of sat down, I didn't really have a plan, and because I've literally just finished editing a chapter, that's that's where my brain is at. That is literally where my brain is at right now. Um, so... Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this one here um, so that I don't ramble into another 30 minute video because those things take a long time to upload to YouTube and the amount of times they fail to upload to YouTube and I have to start them again is ridiculous and annoying. So <laughs> I'm gonna try and um, try and keep my uh, my vlogs a little bit shorter for the time being. Um, or at least, you know, this one. Who knows what happened, what happened next time. All right, okay, so I 
Hope you guys have found this one sort of interesting. I apologise if it is once again me talking about the Gong Sun books, but um, as I've told you guys before, when I'm focused on my writing, I'm focused on my writing, and it, you know, it's that, it is what it is. Um, anyway, I will see you guys next time. See ya! <laughs> If you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others, and if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya!